country boy. Y'all, this here's some good eat. Elite Recipe Source doing another regional American classic, Low Country Boil, aka Frogmore Stew, aka Shrimp Boil. This stuff is a centerpiece to outdoor get togethers along the coastal or low country areas from South Carolina to Georgia to Florida to the Gulf Coast. And while this recipe is country, it'll rock you like a hurricane. And here I am finishing off the intro with a face reveal and a little more background on this dish before getting into the kitchen. I didn't find out about this uh, low country boil stuff until probably about, uh, about 10 or so years, years ago when I spent some time in the Savannah, Georgia area and learned about the local cuisine firsthand from going to food parties at people's houses and from working at a restaurant on River Street in downtown Savannah. And one of the biggest things I learned was how well pork and seafood went together, especially really salty and smoky pork like ham or bacon or sausage. Another thing I learned from a local foodie down there was that the experience of eating low country boil can be enhanced even further with a dipping sauce made with mayonnaise, Old Bay seasoning, and a few other things. So the dipping sauce, which I'm calling category five shrimp sauce, I'll get out of the way first because I can keep it in the fridge once it's put together and it's not really time sensitive. And here I'm using the lay the tablespoons and teaspoons on the counter method of measurement to eyeball the amounts as I put them in the bowl to come up with these proportions. It's about four tablespoons mayonnaise, one tablespoon ketchup, one half teaspoon mustard, one half teaspoon hot sauce, a half teaspoon of Old Bay seasoning, and about a fourth teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. Optional ingredients I like to add sometimes if I have them are sriracha sauce for a little extra heat without the vinegar of traditional American hot sauces, and anchovy or anchovy paste for added fishiness and salt. With the Category 5 sauce out of the way and into the refrigerator, let's get to the grocery list of what goes into a low country boil. At a bare minimum, a proper low country boil is going to have potatoes, corn, sausage, and shrimp. And this list here is in the same order that they'll be placed into the pot. And they're also in order of price per pound, I believe, as well. The potatoes, I'm going with a Klondike Rose. Uh, you want to use some kind of a smaller uh, red potato. The corn, I'm going to cut that in half or into thirds. Sausage, um, pre-cooked is the easiest and that's usually what I saw going on um, when I was down in Savannah. Um, I'm gonna be using some pre-cooked sausage but I'm also going to, to be using some, uh, some uncooked sausage in, in there as well uh, to show y'all both ways of doing it. Um, the shrimp is gonna be, uh, you wanna go with uncooked shrimp obviously and uh, preferably shell on. Other optional ingredients uh, that I've seen in recipes for this include onions, uh, lemon slices, and crawfish or crabs. If you've got, uh, if you've got uncooked crawfish and crabs, uh, this recipe would be a, a great place to use it. Um, now what I'm going to show you though is just the basic version um, from what I learned in the Savannah River area in, on the Georgia side of the South Carolina Georgia border and it's just a basic four ingredient version potatoes, corn, uh, sausage, and shrimp. I, I am going to use uh, some uncooked andouille sausage and I saw this at the store as a Louisiana with a certified Cajun logo and real Louisiana address and phone number So I'm gonna be putting that in there as well um, But I'm also using uh, some some pre-cooked sausage uh, Using a kielbasa and a uh, Carolina pride plain smoked sausage uh, Both of those coming from South Carolina and all three of these worked out really well with the potatoes, you want the pieces to be equally sized as is standard procedure for boiled potatoes. But here I'm going to be looking for an excuse to cut some of the larger potatoes into halves so that the larger potatoes cut up into pieces are roughly the size of the smaller whole potatoes. The reason I'm looking for an excuse to cut some of these potatoes is that I want some exposed cut surfaces to absorb the Old Bay seasoning and salt that's going to be going into the pot as well as the Old Bay that I'm going to be sprinkling on at the end. So here's a summary of the procedure and timing of what I'm about to do here. 
And I know it's kind of wordy, but I'm gonna throw this PowerPoint up there on the screen from time to time as I demonstrate this recipe. That way, if you're like me and you're using the television version of YouTube to follow along with video recipes and don't have access to the video's description, you can still pull up these timing guidelines with the remote control. And if you're more of a video description person, I'll have this info down there as well. Anyway, so I'll get to step one, which is gonna involve the potatoes, a gallon and a half of room temperature water, a half cup of Old Bay seasoning, and enough salt to cover the bottom of the pot. So I'm filling the pot with water, and I'm using some of the water that the shrimp thawed in to fill some of the pot to try to get as much of the shrimp flavor that I can out of this uh, pretty expensive seafood. Like I said, my total water here is about a gallon and a half, so I'm adding a little more to get to that point. I'm adding in salt, enough to cover the bottom of the pot. I'm using ice cream salt or rock salt here. I'm adding in the half cup of Old Bay. And I'm adding in the potatoes with the heat off, and then I'm gonna turn the heat up and gradually bring it to a boil. I know that most recipes for this online will say differently. They'll say to have the water boiling first and then to add the potatoes. But I think doing it gradually is the safer way to go. It's a pretty standard way of evenly cooking potatoes. Plus, I can assure you that doing it this way is still plenty legit and authentic so far as a Georgia Carolina version of low country boil goes. And so we've got the first step done. We've got the potatoes and the one and a half gallons of water and the Old Bay and the salt in there. And we've turned the heat on and we're waiting for that to come to a boil. The next step, uh, step number two, is once it comes to a boil is to, if, if we're using the uncooked sausage, the uncooked sausage is gonna come in in step two once the water starts to come to a boil. So once I see a little bit of boiling action starting, that's when I go ahead and add in the, uh, the whole uncooked sausage. I'm not gonna cut this uncooked sausage up before putting it in. I'm just putting it in as is whole. We're gonna let this go for about seven minutes or so uh, before crossing out step two and moving on to step three, which is gonna be to add the corn. So now the corn is only gonna go about five minutes to complete step three. And with the five minutes of the corn in there, we're entering into the home stretch. The potatoes, the whole uncooked sausage, and corn should be pretty much done by now. And now it's time to add in the pre-cooked cuts of sausage, which all we really have to do is heat up here. So once the, uh, the pre-cooked sausage has been going in there for about four minutes or so, this next step here, step five, this is very important. You wanna test a potato or two, uh, some of the bigger pieces, you wanna test them for doneness. And only once they're done are we gonna add the shrimp. So the step five, this is very important. Once a, once a potato has been tested for doneness, uh, once you, you're confident that those potatoes are done, then step six is to take off the heat and add the shrimp. And then just get it off the heat and uh, leave it covered for 10 minutes. I've got a, uh, a flat top kind of burner deal, so I've got to physically remove that pot off of that burner to get it off the heat because those burners, uh, they have a lot of residual heat in them even once you turn them off. So once the pot has been sitting off of heat for about 10 minutes, it's a matter of straining it out. Traditionally, 
This is done with a big kind of strainer that sits in the pot and then it's taken out and the contents are poured out onto a newspaper line picnic table or something like that. But since this is the indoor kitchen, I'm using a spider strainer to put the goodies into a big pan and I'm, I'm shaking a ton of Old Bay all over the stuff trying to get it everywhere. I'm of course going to cut up the whole andouille sausage before plating it up with a side of category 5 sauce. So there it is. If you've ever wanted to host a good old fashioned hurricane party but didn't know what to serve, well now you know.